slapping black coffee in the services gone midnight. You almost kid yourself it's cinematic, as lorries fly by in the inside lane, blurring with the reflections from the seats by the windows. Premier League highlights on the plasma in the corner probably would have been omitted from anything cinematic. Ferry bridge services from the inside looking out. When you were younger, you and your mates could see this spot, watching down from the Warwick estate as analogue eyes sought mischief. Dialing 999, reporting bombs, and then waiting for patrol cars to frantically soothe your boredom. So, if this is cinematic, I guess Shane Meadows might call the shots. Sing us some more sink estate sonnets before a lingering frame on your soya milk latte. Fiddling with your dockers, scowling at the boom mic, whilst West Bromwich Albion celebrate in the background. Good evening, ladies and gents and people who are neither. My name is Matt Abbott. Uh, welcome to this week's Insta Session. This is number 36. I started these at the beginning of May last year, um, and I've been very fortunate to have po poets from around the UK uh, and also further afield, and tonight is no exception uh, in that in that case. Uh, tonight, uh, our guest poet is Toby Abiodun from Nigeria. Uh, Toby was born and bred in Benin City. Uh, he's a multiple slam champion, has performed at loads of uh, festivals, including the Lagos International Poetry Festival and the Poetry, Afri uh, Poetry Africa Festival. So I am going to invite Toby to join. Uh, it would be nice if Instagram didn't change these things all the time so that I could actually little buttons on my screen like every week and for somebody who's a technophobe like me it makes it very intimidating but I've just invited Toby so hopefully he'll be connecting in a sec unless I've done it wrong <laughs> have I? oh dear oh here we go nice 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 yo how you doing? I'm fine, good, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you, good, yeah, thanks for joining us. Uh, it's really exciting to have you on. Um, thank you. Yeah, how, how, how's, how's life over in Nigeria? How's it, how's it going at the moment? Yeah, we're, we're pushing, we're just moving along with it, yeah. Yeah? Are you, still, are you still in full lockdown, or are you sort of moving out of lockdown, or? No, we're moving out, uh, moving now, there's no lockdown, we don't have a lockdown right now. Yeah. Cool. Good, good. Have you done any gigs in person yet? Like, have you performed at any venues or? Uh, just a few intimate sessions. So it's mostly virtual. We've been having more, more virtual events, but the few ones that I've done are very intimate, like few, 10, 15 persons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How does it feel to be back on a stage? Because I, I just can't imagine. It's been over a year for me. Was it was it a real buzz or was it terrifying? Or a bit of both? Yeah, I... <laughs> Yeah, I, I am still trying to, you know, to get back into the, the, the vibe of, you know, performing on stage because, you know, I've been out, we've been out of it for like a year. So coming back into it is, it feels strange, but it also feels good to be back, you know, sharing poems with people and you know, getting the reactions and, you know, get feedback from them. So, yeah. Yeah, totally. Have you been doing any slams online? Because I know you do a lot of slams. No, no, I haven't slammed since 2019. I had my last slam in 2019, so yeah. Yeah. Because I imagine that doing a slam online would be particularly difficult, like uh, like getting the atmosphere going, because the slams are quite lively, aren't they? They're really, really, like, I can imagine that would be really tough yeah. on Zoom or whatever. <laughs> yeah, true. That, that reminds me, I did a slam in 2020 during the lockdown. Yeah, so it was oh, yeah. very different and very difficult, because the, the energy wasn't there. It was just, you know... It was somehow so, yeah. The, the energy is totally different. You don't get the vibe that you expect, the the feedback, you know, the energy and everything. So, yeah, virtual events. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, I, I imagine it'd be very weird. So, um, have you been have you been doing much writing recently during the lockdown, or uh, or have you sort of been busy just surviving? <laughs> More busy just surviving, cause you know. Lockdown, Corona, and everything. So it took away, it took a lot away. So we're trying to, you know, get back and get things back together. So, yeah, more of surviving, a little bit of writing. Yeah, because you can't take the writing away. Yeah, so, yeah more of surviving. Yeah. It seems to me like a lot of people who are writers have really struggled to write during COVID, and then people who weren't writers before have been like, "Oh, I've done loads of writing." <laughs> it sort of seems like yeah, it's yeah, a bit. Yeah. Of... <laughs> 
Yeah, you know, yeah. For, 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 for most of us who have been in this for particularly, for someone like me, I've been in this for like um, two, three years actively. So I've been very active for the last, for like two years before COVID. So uh, COVID was a chance for us to, you know, to just sit back, you know, like and think, you know, oh, right. group, we strategize. While for those who are just starting off, it was a time for them to really find themselves, you know, or get into this thing. You know, so. Yeah, totally. Well, do you fancy sharing a poem? Oh, yeah, sure. Sure, of course. Sure. Nice. So, uh, I don't know which poem to start with. So, uh, there's this very, there's this love poem. I don't know what they call a love poem, but it's a love, this love poem I like to share because it cool. carries a little bit of the realities of how we grew as, you know, as Nigerians. So, so I'll just get right into it, yeah? Cool. My father gives love better when he is drunk. My mama takes the moments with her hands and body. We are in the living room watching TV, and my father kisses my mother on her neck. We close our eyes first, disappear after as if to say our eyes cannot behold iniquity, as if to say our bodies will never be ripe and ready for this same ritual, as if to say love does not need other people's eyes. As if to say love is too sacred to be public. All the kisses I have had came in through dark places, in boxes where I could not behold the giver's eyes. I have never made love with the windows open, because sex is dark magic. How else can you describe making a girl moan by just touching her? I do not make love with the lights on, because blood covenants are most potent in dark places. They say God knows the number of my hair. My lover's touch makes it possible for God to count them. They say that this thing, this poem will anger God, make him take my life from me. So I beg him for forgiveness, beg him for one more day, then ask my lover to touch me and take my garden breath away. So that's, that's what that's. Wow, nice. Yeah, I like that. Very powerful. Great way to start. Yeah. Awesome. Is that a, yeah, is that a fairly new poem or...? Not, not, not really so a new forgot. poem. I wrote this, yeah, 20, 2019, I think. Yeah, 19, yeah. Hey, for some yeah. people, that's brand new. Like, <laughs> cool. Right. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I love, um, so it, it I love was... that picture. So, go on. What? What did you say? I was just going to say, I, was gonna say I, I love that picture you've got behind you. It's really cool. Okay, yeah, it's a painting. It's a painting. My yeah. Made this. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Sorry, what were you going to say? Yo, I was going to talk about the poem. So as, as Nigerians, really just Nigerians, there is this conception. Do I call it a misconception or a belief about, you know, falling in love, sex, and the entire thing? So this was like a response to this misconception about, you know, being in love with somebody and not being able to, you know, physically or intimately, you know, show, show affection to, you know, to, to the person or the people you're in love with. So it was my response to that, that misconception, yeah. That was what the conference would be about. Yeah, no, it was it was it was fascinating. Um yeah, absolutely. And it, that's what I love about poetry. It's just uh it's a way for you to offer your response to that conception and also like you know, in, in the UK that's that's not as common an attitude. So like it's fascinating for me to hear that dynamic as well. So Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Thank thank you. Because so you, you speak quite a lot about um, social and political issues, don't you, in your work, from yes. what I've seen? Yes, yes, I do. You know, because um, here, right here in Nigeria, there is a lot of, there are lots of things to talk about as regarding politics, um, corruption, oppression, there is so much to talk about. And I feel, as, as, as a poet, it, the onus lies on me, you know, to address these issues, because we, we live in a society where it's difficult to talk because you could get into trouble for talking. And so a lot of people run away from talking. So I, I feel if people, if we don't talk, if people don't talk about these things, don't react to these things, it will go on for a long time and, you know, it, keep, it, keep, it goes on like in a circle. So I use, I use poetry as a way to, you know, to talk back, to, to shout back at oppression, to shout back at corruption, to shout back at, you know, things that should be shouted at. So yeah, shouting at, so yeah. That's what I do with poetry. 
So do you feel like poetry is one of the only safe ways to do that? Like one of the only safe ways to sort of shout back at oppression? Or do you ever feel like as a poet, you might be told to stop talking about certain things? Or like, where, where does the line stop with that, do you think? I do, I do not think poetry is the only way to, to, to do that. There, is, there are other forms of art that can actually do that. So, and I don't, think it's, it's, I don't think it's possible to, you know, I don't think there is a line. As long as I still have my tongue and I still have these lips and I can still speak, I will always keep speaking. So there is no line for me. Until I see the change that I want to see, until I see the, um, the reforms that I long to see, I'll keep talking and I'll keep writing. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, that's that great. No, it's, it's so important to do. It's so important to do. You know, I, you know, it, I, I've seen that obviously the last, you know, six months or the last year or so, it has been difficult in Nigeria. Like, there's been a lot of clashes and a lot of protests and stuff. So, yeah, I guess it's all the more important for, for people like yourself to speak up. Yeah, it's really important. Um, yeah. Do you feel like, um, is there quite a lot of, uh, is it only in art that people can do it or is there like other like n newspapers or magazines or like media outlets that speak out against it or does uh, is it sort of got to be in art because that's the only place that's not oppressed if that makes sense in terms so, yeah. of like protest and rebellion so yeah there, there are different mediums of protest but i think um online as you know the internet online social media has made it easy for people to actually protest because you know if you if you talk about print newspapers there are lots of mediums through which your protest will go through before it gets on paper. On like social media, where you can actually just come online and rant and you know, just you know pour out your 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 vex your vexes or whatever. So yeah, social media has made it easier, made it you know created a safe space for people to actually vent, to actually you know protest. On like other uh, uh, forms of you know communication, other forms of venting, where you it has to go through processes has to go through people so they, yeah. they check these things and they may end up not coming out like for so social media has given us that open space you know to really put, put our, 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 our contents out you know our arts out mm. and everything so, yeah well good i mean it's amazing to see it's so important like i say it's it's and it's it's, it's such a great way for people to hear the true stories and hear what's actually going on as well you know um yeah. great um do you fancy share, sharing another poem yeah, I should. So uh, now that we're talking about politics, I should. I think I should share a poem that I wrote a while back concerning. Um, there was a time we had issues. You know, there was this killing. We had the, the, um, the um, police, the military. You know, they were involved in you know, harassing and killing young people, um, kidnapping of. And there were bandits kidnapping children. The police were doing gas, the military and everything. So I wrote this as a response to you know, that incident. So yeah. Let's go. When the government decides to pull a blind eye to the killing of our children, we will not stay silent, we will fight. There will be no quiet moments, no peace walks or silent protests. Our frustrations will rise into a fury. We will sum our prayers into a feast. Our voices will be cocked shot, guns taking headshots. Our lips will be bayonet. There will be no white flag on our tongues. We will speak. Only of the revolution, there will be no reconciliation of histories or dates. Or what does a calendar do but to remind you that your days are numbered? We will fight, for we are tired of living in lack and want. We have become too poor a people we can't even own our mistakes. When the government decides to pull a blind eye to the killing of our children, we will not stay silent. We will fight, for we will cowardice to live like all is well in a country where nothing ends well, not even our pounds. So that's, that's, so that's, that's, that's the response wow. to, you know. Awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. I love that. Um, I yeah. mean, obviously, like, it's a, you know, it's an awful situation, but, like, hearing poetry come back like that is just, yeah, so refreshing to see. Um, yeah. So, do you... I guess if you, you reflect a lot of the social and, and political issues in Nigeria specifically, um, yeah. do you find that, say, like the Poetry Africa Festival and the Lagos International Poetry Festival, is that loads of different sort of political situations from around? Like, is it? Do you, do you find that a lot of different political situations clash? Or I'm I'm just curious to to know how those translate because I'm always paranoid that I write about 
like Brexit and stuff. And then when I perform abroad, they'll just be like, what are you on about? <laughs> um, so, but, yeah, so um, I've, been, I've been a guest in both Poetry Africa and Libfest. And from what, I've, what, what I learned from being a guest there, having to perform there with the fact that you can actually perform any poem as a poet and they will, people will respond to it. Because that's the idea of poetry. I think initially the idea of poetry is to express. So whatever it is you're expressing, there will always be people who, um, willing to listen to whatever it is you're expressing. Me. Hi, mate. You're right. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Are oh, you back? Good. Good, good, good. Yeah, you were yeah. absolutely bang on answer there. Like, you're right. You should hear a poem from no matter where the country or the city or whatever. As a human, that's you connect with that poem, and that's why poetry is so important. It's like an international language. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Do you fancy sharing sharing another poem? Sorry, I feel like I've 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 taken up a bit of time there by reading mine. Oh, okay. Yeah, of course I could share another one. So I'll share this one. Cool. This one is a little bit personal. So yeah, my my personality in the poem. My introversion is loud, strong yet unsteady like rage. I am a safe space for the cold and the lonely nights. Creator of the always alone, always trying to get it right. My and yes, this loneliness sometimes is a war. It gets difficult and I get stuck. But I let it flow like a river song. Do not question my melody. I've got music for bones. I'm talking vertebrae and spinal cords. They say boys like me are difficult to love. True, my bones are collapsible. I cannot stop myself from falling for the wrong people. Very open to opinions, true. But sometimes I am like a viral YouTube video. You must respect my views. My introversion calls me by my name and tells me, boy, right. Boy, right. Boy, right. Boy, right. And boy, I write. I write for all the places that the light refuses to touch. This poem right here is a blind spot. My introversion is both fuel and fire. I spit flames onto mics. This should remind you of the burning bush. Other performers best take off their shoes. Each stage becomes a holy ground. What's an introvert without hard work? I push harder than a woman in labor. So when the time is right, I can return all the favors. I am the closest to will get to touching the revolution. If you touch my body, you have touched the whole world. They say I am Antonira Beth the way I go against the odds, meaning that my introversion is goddamn defiant. My teacher told me that my introversion is a book question. Who and what the world is yet to discover like a tenth planet. So when they make claims to being a mix of rhythm and depth, my introversion steps up to the plate and tells them that I am a mix of me and myself. Thank you. Beautiful. That was beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. I missed missed Thank a couple you. of words because of a internet connection, but pretty much got all of it. Like it was a beautiful poem. Um yeah, that was great. Thank you. Uh let's have a look. So it's nearly five two. So what what have you what have you got planned next? Have you got any projects planned or have you got any more gigs planned or are you just gonna wait until COVID's out of the way first? So um, I have plans of, you know, putting out poetry videos, lots of poetry videos as, as time goes on. So I've been learning to shoot and edit myself. So I intend to put out you know, lots of poetry videos as time goes on. So as long as I, I continue to learn how to do it. Yeah, you have got a lot of great content out there, to be fair. Like I have noticed you've got a lot of great videos. Yeah, that's 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 cool. Um yeah, I, like, and I guess, like, we just have to wait for gigs to come back. And hopefully, like, have you gigged in the UK before? Like, have you have you had a chance to come over to the UK? No, no, no I haven't. I haven't. I'm looking forward to that, actually, to come over. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, yeah, it'd be amazing. Like, I'd love to, I'd love to travel to to Nigeria and perform at some point. I like, it. I really hope that once sure. everything's open again, we can all just travel about and yeah, that'd be buzzing. Sure, um, sure, sure. So. It's five two. Uh, I reckon you've got time to share one more if, if if you would like to, if you'd be happy to. But I don't want to put you under pressure. Like it's entirely up to you. 
Yeah, sure. I can share another one if if cool. I'm permitted. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So every night before I sleep, I do a victory dance, knowing one day I will wake up on the other side of life already defeated. There are a thousand and one ways to die here. Losing your breath is only one of them. I've been told to always follow my dreams, but my dreams seem to never know the way. Yesterday, I wanted to be a pilot. Today, I am reciting poems on stage. They say that I give up too easily, but do they know that sometimes the hunger to survive over to succeed? Blame it on the economy. My poems are always wanting something. My voice always demanding prizes. My pockets always lacking money. Blame it on the country. A birthplace that holds no space for people like me. Here, my eyes are hollowed out from knowing too much loss. My tongue sore from pains that sit so delicately on it. My lips cannot keep a loved one's kiss. My hands heavy from holding too long to survive all day. Forget how to reach for dreams. I cannot love here. Cannot live here with lungs first shot against the breeze like borders are to refugees. Hope is a rare commodity. Nobody sells it here. They say opportunity knocks only once. Yes. But how do you tell that to a people whose homes have no doors? Thank you. Wow. Opportunity knocks once. How do you tell that to people whose homes have no doors? Wow. What a way to end the poem. That was incredible. That was so beautiful. Um, Paul, thank you. I really, really appreciate you uh, giving up your time and sharing your work and, and joining us. Um, that's it's really, really cool. I'm buzzing about that. Um, thank you. Yeah. Time. So if if we want to check you out, I guess we want to we go on YouTube. Is that the best place to check you out? Well, give you a follow on here, but I think Instagram. Yeah, because I have more of my content on Instagram than on YouTube. So, okay. Yeah, Instagram, like... Instagram. Thank you cool. very much. Okay, mate. Time. Well. No, thank you. I really appreciate it. You've been absolutely fantastic. I've loved hearing your work and uh, it's great to meet you as well. Like, thank you for, because you submitted a poem to our feed, like, and that's how I came across your work for you submitting. So, so thank you for that. It's great to make the, make the connection. Um, yeah, cool. Well, thank you, Toby. Um, much appreciated. Hopefully we'll meet in person at some point. Oh, yeah. See you later, mate. Take care. So that was Toby Abiyodun. I know the connection went slightly, but I picked up pretty much all of his words and they're really powerful. Uh, it was fantastic to hear Toby's work um, and just to get an insight into to Nigerian culture, like spoken word culture and, and political culture and how poetry is playing such an important role uh, with protests. Because obviously, as we know, in the UK as well, it's, it's going to become even more important because they literally are putting through laws to try and stop us from protesting on the streets. So poetry is only going to get more and more important. Um, next week, uh, the guest is uh, Leila Jane King from Iran. Uh, Leila is a gay poet from Iran who's got a book coming out very soon. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what Leila shares. Um, all of the previous sessions are online as well. You can watch them back. Um, so please give him a share. And give, make sure you give Toby a follow on Instagram because that's where his content is. So yeah, join us again next week, same time, uh, 7.30 till 8pm UK time. Uh, my name is Matt Abbott. We are Nimson Fugs. Thank you for tuning in. Stay safe. Yeah.